All right, so today we're going to have a look at the, uh, the Space Marine Heroes frame from... Mystery Box! What? Mystery what? Box! What? Mystery Box! Mystery Box! Mystery Box! Mystery Box! That's right, Wasteland! We're going back to our roots with this one. We finished the hypercar, we finished the animal, and today we're going to do another mystery, miserable box episode. So there you go, that's the last two on there. And man, this this box is falling apart. Let's let's not kid ourselves. It's uh, it's getting a bit old. It's a bit it's a bit loved. So let's get some of the old uh, fixing tape on there, and let's just jump straight into this, boys and girls. All right, okay. So what is it we're looking for this time round? Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Now I will say in advance, I apologise for having a plaster on my thumb. Work is uh, quite hard these days. But uh, yeah, I'd say this one feels good. Let's let's take this out. Let's have a look. All right. So what we got? Open it up and dun 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 dun. dun. Ooh, yes. Twenty-four hour repair service. Yeah, it's got a little spring inside it. Look at that. Absolute classic Matchbox breakdown van here. Copyright nineteen eighty-five. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a fun little truck. It'll, uh, ooh, ooh, what's that? Normally I'd roll for the challenge, but, uh, how can I resist? So what do we have here on this little piece of paper? It is a... Hello, Wasteland! Yes, and welcome to Mystery Box Challenge number three, the Scrap Heap Challenge. So, before we jump into the rules of this challenge, let us look at the wonderful car slash truck that we have to work on today. Now, in terms of offerings from the Misery Box this one's pretty good. I mean, it's got wheels. It has a lovely little play feature. It still has writing on it. There you go. And if I just quickly drill out the single rivet on it, it's pretty easy to take apart. You know, it's this is I, uh, compared to some of the things I've purchased in the past certainly some of the things i've seen and some of the cars i've had to work on this is pretty good there's a lot of elements of this that could work really well and i think it just comes down to deciding which one's going to be in the final build and which ones aren't there's the it's a dirty boy it's a rusty boy it's an old boy let's do this so, let's talk about the rules of this challenge. So, being a scrappy challenge, no, none of these nice untouched cars, no, that defeats the purpose of this. The only untouched car in this challenge will be the one from the mystery box. Everything else I use has to come from the trash, has to come from the detritus, the bits of cars and trucks and God knows what that get cut off and thrown to one side and just never see the live day. I've had some of these bits years, years, and I never came up with anything to use them in. Well, that changes now. So any, any nice 3D printed cast bits, no, not allowed. So I'm sorry, all of my sponsors, I can't use any of your stuff in today's episode. This is about getting through the absolute mountain of just rubbish that I accumulate because it's not just nice, fun little bits that you cut off of cars. I mean, okay, there's, there's a lot of them. No, it's about all the cars that you gather together where you buy it, you drill it apart, and then maybe you don't have time to finish the project or you never quite get started or you get distracted. And before you know it, all the bits just go in one great big tub and all get mixed together. And it's just why, why do I do this to myself? So 
No, that ends now. This is going to be the kind of challenge that you, yes, you listening and watching at home, you can do this. If I can do this with just the rubbish from my scrap heap, I know you can too. Now, that said, this isn't going to be the kind of video where I can list every single part and every single piece that I find. Because a lot of this stuff, I just don't even know. Like, I, to put it in perspective, I'm going to try and not fabricate as much as I can. Like, I'm still going to be cutting things and modifying things and using things in new and interesting ways. But I'm not going to show you how to make, like, an engine from scratch. This is going to be how can I convert an engine out of rubbish. So we're going to be using a lot of bicarbonate of soda and a lot of super glue. So first things first, boys and girls, open a window. Do not use super glue if you are a small child and prone to stick things in your face. And of course, Christian mothers the world over, if you're watching this video, do not be alarmed. The white powder you see on the screen is bicarbonate of soda. That's literally all it is, because it sets super glue like instantly. Uh, I know you can get like little sprays and things for it, but no, it works too well. And it's cheap. So, how to get started with a project like this? Well, first things first, I'm going to need to just see if any of this trash inspires anything. I mean, if, over the course of this video, if I can find or remember the cars and trucks and things that all these bits came from that I end up using, I will show them on screen. I will have an image of the packaging on the screen so you can see it if that's what you're into. But a lot of this stuff, I just have no idea. It, it got taken apart years ago and it's just been sat very sad in my box ever since. Okay, so what what can we do with this build? Now, I want something that keeps the original purpose of the truck intact. You know, I love the idea of this being like a recovery vehicle. So rather than go, okay, let's just cover it in guns and spikes and grenades and da 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 da. No, we're going to focus on keeping this relatively utilitarian. Now, straight away, I'm trying to find things that connect, that work well together. And uh, before you know it, I'm finding these different grills, these different radiator parts that, yeah, I think this would make quite a cool, a cool front end for this build. So that's what we're going to do. Um, to start, we're going to need to cut sections because while this fits surprisingly well, I mean, I've no idea what, what little Land Rover like truck or Jeep or whatever this was from. Um, it, it completely by accident found that, yeah, these two bits, they kind of work well together. I mean, the passenger seat and driver's seat line up well with the, the windscreen. The, I mean, okay, the door's in the wrong place, but, you know, that can be fixed with a little help with a saw. And, you know, before you know it, we've got something forming here. And with this kind of project, we just need to jump straight into it. Now, one last foreword about this video. You're going to see a lot of me cutting and sticking and breaking things off and re-gluing and general car modification. Like this isn't like a, a standard plastic or resin kit where you can just take a craft knife and shave a bit off. Die, you sod. This is the kind of project where everything has to be done by hand and you're making it up as you go along. It's like taking a wonderful jigsaw and you throw all the pieces in the air and you attack them with a pair of scissors and you're trying to glue jigsaw pieces back together in a hodgepodge way. There is no hard fast plan with this. We're just going to go at it and see what happens. I decided while I had the little jeweler saw out there, I decided to saw along the actual door trim and the frame just to give it a bit of separation, give it a bit more life, a bit more realism. And, you know, I, I like this is this is what makes a project when you see these things and it just works. All right. OK, so you're probably wondering why do I have this jeweler saw in my face when I make these videos? If I just put the camera as I see it, you would get that view 90 percent of the time. I have to consider what you guys are looking at 
as I'm recording and editing these videos. So you don't always get to see the perfect one-to-one -one bird's eye view of what's going on. But I like to think I'm a cut above some of the other guys that just stick the camera on a tripod and it's unedited footage for like four hours, right? All right, okay, so this is going to be the first cutting and sticking of the project, so we've got to make sure this is right. Now, I'm editing down a lot of footage here because there's, there's like 10 minutes of wiggling things and trying to get it to hold together. If I can just get that one drop of super glue on there, I can get it to hold, but... This is where our bicarbonate of soda trick comes in because this stuff works w way better than it has any right to work. I would go so far as to say that this by itself allows this kind of project to happen because just trying to super glue this stuff would just be a, a nightmare. A lot of my early builds were just super glued together um, and it does work. It's just this is so much quicker and what might take days can take hours instead it's it's that kind of difference so there you go you can drop it on and i try if i can i try to use the bicarbonate of soda on the inside of the body rather than the outside if i'm doing it on the outside i try and make it look more like a weld pattern which was a bit of advice i had given to me early on when i started using it for these kind of projects so, person that gave me that advice, you know who you are. Thank you again, my friend. Now, one thing you will see with this project is I'm not afraid to cut things down roughly with a pair of clippers rather than getting the craft knife out and rather than taking my time and care and blah, blah, blah. No, we're, we're trying to get this done. We're trying to get the ball rolling on this. I can waste time with all the nice, fine, fiddly, fun bits later on. Right now, we got to make this look like it could at least run, let alone have wheels. So we're going to use the back of the radiator, which has really nice detail, by the way, to attach it to the uh, the, the original radiator, the, the second or third, I don't even know. But the other radiator we just glued in place. And you might find as you're going along that you're getting the bicarbonate of soda absolutely everywhere and that's fine you know that's that's to be expected it's it's a messy kind of project but i will say this there are easy ways of cleaning that up now if you're looking at this wonderful double bumper and going oh, it doesn't look like the uh, strongest of uh, bonds you've got there you would be 100 percent correct because later on in this video that's going to snap right off uh, just like in my hand it just crunch and it's off so keep an eye out for that so here we go we've got all this this bicarbonate dusting and if you take an old paintbrush that is just like trash um use it to brush off the excess i see a lot of videos online of people making these kind of builds or just builds in general of bicarbonate of soda and super glue and they get it all over their hands and the work surface and they never take the time to just brush the excess away. Now I get it when you're in the heat of the moment. It's like, yeah, I want to keep building. I want to keep gluing. I want to keep the ball rolling. But it's like cooking food with dirty hands. You just shouldn't do it. All right. Take a brush, brush it off. Okay. So the back of the truck is uh, naturally posing an issue because now that we've modified the front with after body materials we uh, can't just cram the old one in it, it just doesn't work it just doesn't look good so instead we're going to make a new one so it's back to the car parts graveyard to see what we can dig up now i found this on the back of i think it was wilco it was like a one of those little car carrying trucks and, but it was a weird one. It was like a, a half truck or something. It was really small. Um, and yeah, it, it was okay. But as a material, it, it's pretty nice because it's just a nice flat textured surface that looks like metal paneling. Or in this case, if you put two pieces together, you can make something that looks like a truck bed. Now, it needs a bit of work. Like everything, you have to snip bits, you have to glue bits, but... Before you know it, you get that aha moment and it starts to make a lot of sense. Now, already you can see, there it goes. There it goes. 
Yes, yes. So as I said, it's not the strongest material. It's good, don't get me wrong, bicarbonate of soda is good with super glue, but it is not the be all end all. If you don't use it correctly, if you don't have enough support, it will just snap off. All right, so more sawing, more hacking, and before you know it, we've got enough of a flat surface to make the truck bed. Now, if any of you guys saw my computer mouse into a sci-fi speeder video, you can create a support by extending a surface on the inside just straight down and that will create enough of a wall that when you try to put a floor in alongside it you can use that as a rest you can use it as a backdrop for what you're trying to do i i've got to say i love i absolutely love this bicarbonate of soda trick as white powders go absolutely my favorite flour and sugar are up there what can I say? It, it's so easy for making just flat panels because all it takes is a drop of super glue and sprinkle it on and it instantly sets and it instantly combines the two together. And there you go. As I said, if I can, I will glue things on the inside of the bodywork so the seal is hidden. However, on the outside, if you do it carefully, you can make it look like a weld. You can make it look like a deliberate seam. Now, again, I tried to use the back end of this little truck bed to cover those wheel arches because they are exposed and it is a bit strange. But you're going to see it's the same, same problem where it just doesn't look right and no amount of tweaking and cutting and struggling is going to fix that. That said, there's nothing wrong with the project if you just take a step back and decide, you know what? Let's work on a different area, especially with this, where because we're still right in the baby stages, we haven't even got a base to this truck. So let's let's focus on that. Now, I can't just use the base that came with it. That ain't going to work because we've changed the front end of it so much. Even if we turn it around, it just doesn't look right to me. Likewise, chances of us finding a perfect replacement are zero. So let's just get creative. This is the interior from one of those like Sonic Boom Super Subwoofer Hot Wheels cars. And we've got this great Ford Mustang base. So why not smash the two together and use that? I mean, this is incredibly well loved. I'm not going to use this on anything else. Let's use it here. And with that interior, even though all of this exterior detail isn't normally meant to be seen, that's normally hidden by car. I love it. I love the shape. I love the angles. This all feels right. And, you know, when you get a moment like that, just just run with it. Just carry it. Now, one thing I will say, and this is a happy, happy little accident, happy discovery when it comes to model making in this scale. A lot of the cars and trucks even though they're not designed to be together and even though you know trying to find two things that perfectly match is like a diamond in the rough there are a lot of standardized sizes and i was surprised to find that the interior matched this really well the base plate lined up pretty good you know there's there's a lot of carryover it doesn't feel quite as like whoa that's definitely not meant to be on there at least I'm saying that now, having completed the project, like in the heat of the moment, it's crazy. So wheels, 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 wheels. Um, I wasn't just going to use like a standard set of wheels because I think that would be boring. The wheels that came with it would, are just too small, just too small at this point. I'm going to use a paper clip for the axles. It's almost like you could make a whole car out of paper clips. And it's a wonderfully versatile material. Now, these individual wheels, even though they're matching pairs, I completely destroyed in taking them off originally. So they need a bit of love. And this is a bit more of a challenge because, hey, making the axles is easy enough, right? Well, okay, let's catch up. That's how you make axles, right? What, you want me to go over it again? Oh, all right. Okay, so to make axles, in this case for wheels that are just like garbage, like for bits, you take something like a paper clip or a metal rod and you want to cut it to longer than you think you need. 
This is a case where having more and cutting down is better than measuring 500 times and then getting the perfect cut. Because there's going to be so many little things that you can't see to start. Like, I've got one hubcap here holding a tire together, and I've got the other wheel that has an actual alloy to it <laughs> i've got something to glue it onto the other the white one there has nothing the plastic's completely ripped from the inside so i'm going to need to fabricate something for that wheel certainly anyway you cut more paper clip than you need then you measure it against the body of the car and you make a good good estimate of the size then you use a piece of plastic tubing this is going to form the actual axle that the wheel will roll in this is the fixed part on the vehicle. The wheels themselves are effectively floating in that. You want to cut the tube so it's shorter than the metal pin because that's going to be what holds the wheels on there. I'll just quickly show you how to you know, fix a wheel if it doesn't have anything for you to glue to. And what we're going for here, the, the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that when the two wheels are attached to the pin and the pins floating loosely inside that plastic tubing, that none of it bunches up or rubs. And it, they don't rub, the wheels don't rub against the axle and the whole assembly doesn't rub against the car base, the base plate. So once we're sure with that, let's glue the first wheel down. This is the easy one. This is the one where you get the super glue on there, you get the baking soda on there, and this is the strength, this is the hard side of it. The, the, what makes it so difficult working with wheels like this is the fact that none of these bonds are going to be particularly strong. I mean, you can make them as strong as you can. In this case, I'm doubling up on the bicarbonate of soda and super glue trick, but I can only do that on the one side because this all has to be assembled in one go. You can't assemble the other wheel, put that on the end and do the trick without putting the plastic tube on there first. And if that plastic tube's on there, you don't want to get any super glue on that. So it becomes this careful balancing act. And I think this is what a lot of people struggle with. Like, this is not an easy thing to do. The easy thing to do is just glue the wheel to the car and the car doesn't roll and it's no longer a toy and that's just very very sad infinite sadness so you know i'd rather do the hard thing and have my toy but it is hard so don't be disheartened you know this is not this is you know pretty pretty cool stuff we're doing so once that once you've glued both wheels to the axle rod and the axle rods within the axle rod tube and and all the bits are together and all the keywords have been said then we're going to finally finally glue that onto our truck now already i can see i need to raise the profile of this to make it work and i try using this little yellow piece which i think is from a, like a cement mixer toy and it's just too tall it's just too tall and you know what in a situation like this it's okay it's okay if you want to just snap that bit off and try something else on there that's not a problem with these kind of projects it's all about the trial and error if you ever need to change things don't worry about it that little yellow bit will come back later on and it will form the engine block that we will make later i try all sorts i try this orange little wind charm looking thing and I'll use that later on as well. But sometimes the solutions come from the most just out there places. And it was when I picked up this cab from what I think was like a steamroller toy. And this just fit so nice. And you wouldn't think it to look at it. I mean, it's, it's six leg-like supports leading up to a weird shaped base. You go, how on earth is that meant to fit on the back of this truck? But it's only when you look at it and put it on there, you go, hang about, that's the right length, the right width, the wheels can go on there and still spin and have enough clearance. I mean, okay, it needs cutting down, it needs modifying, but pair of clippers and before you know it, that's done. And it's, it's quite remarkable. This is, this is where this project really shines. This is the moment for me that I think a lot of you would really enjoy, where it's, you're taking unorthodox 
out their parts and you're using them in ways that no one has ever tried before and that's the best part of this hobby when you can take something that everyone has access to and do something completely new and unique with it and yeah it may not be the prettiest thing it may be the ugliest thing you've ever set your eyes on but you know what it's still pretty damn good and it's a good feeling when you're doing it as well like this truck's going to be a one of a kind it's going to be a scrap heap monster all right so one last bit of advice before we do the engine make sure you uh you fill those wheel wells before you glue the wheels on because it's harder than after you glue them in place all right so again the yellow engine block returns now i could have used like some prefab bit from a hot wheels toy car that i can't remember where the other parts are from but you know what i like this i like finding weird little combinations of bits this support cage from some like matchbox off-road vehicle this fits too well it fits so crazy good over that and and there's no way you can predict it i mean okay it needs cutting it needs sticking it needs modification but man this is what this project is all about and and it's like i said it's that sense of discovery it's that combining elements in ways that have never been combined man you guys are gonna love it you gotta try it my friends and there's a level of detail that can be found with these kind of projects as well that you just don't get when you try and like just buy something off a shelf like i see so many people when they make their gas lands toy cars or models in general and it's just like the stock vehicle with a gun on it and it looks great i mean you can have some world-class painters paint these things but man, there's there's nothing quite like trying to make something from nothing. All right, so I love the idea of using one of the original truck wheels on there as like a blower or a, uh, a carburetor or whatever. But it's just too big. And I have, from my odd wheels bin, I have one of these really small wheels. Now, I found this teeny tiny baby zip tie, which was just to die for, and I found if you snip little bits off, it makes a wonderful little vent pattern at the front. So that, that had to go on there. It just it just had to. It looks, looks too nice. It looks too cute not to. But at this point, we're really into the detailing stages now. I mean, at this point in a project, this is the bit that we've been working ourselves up to everything else is stuff that you have to do you have to have wheels you have to have the bodywork complete before you start getting excited and covering it in guns and spikes and da -da -da -da. now i am technically cheating this challenge a bit here because i'm going to use this paper clip off cut and turn it into little pipes little exhaust vents just whatever a little extra detailing on the engine but you know what this is my video and i'll do what i like thank you very much <laughs> if you don't like it you can skip to the end and then leave a thumbs down i don't care <laughs> that's the thing you know even though this starts off life as a challenge that doesn't mean you can't still have fun with it and see it turn into a real project at the end I mean, okay, you take this cage thing, it was for like from some 4x4 four four Jeep monstrosity by Matchbox or whatever, and there was no way I could have seen the back end of it all of a sudden becoming like these wonderful wheel well covering, like massive structural off road supports. Like, I love that. I love that when a moment like that happens. That is what this project is all about. That is what this hobby is all about. But you have seen enough of that now in this video. I've said love way more times than I do in a day. So, yeah, let's let's skip ahead. This is the kind of part where if you're if you're salivating at that, you go, oh, I bet that's so fun. Oh, I'd, I'd just love to do that myself. You should do this. You should. You should find a car that needs some love. And you should go to your bits bin of just car parts and broken things and you should make one of these because it is crazy good fun and it takes more skill to make something out of nothing than it does to take something that's already made and designed perfectly and just glue it on
All right, at this point, I, I, you know, I wish I could attach the old hook and crane on there, but they, they're just too big and too goofy, and I can't do it. So I'm taking that orange wheel jack looking thing, and I'm going to use that, and I'm going to make the suggestion of a crane, like a suggestion that this thing could drag another vehicle behind it if it needed to. Because I think this is long since transformed from its original intended purpose. Like, like, yeah, this is definitely a, a scrappy build. Like, I mean, in the TV show, their their vehicles are always there to like do a certain thing. Like, oh, launch an egg a thousand meters without the egg breaking, and it's just a complete joke. Like, there's no way you could possibly do it. But that's where the fun of the show comes into it. But to use up parts that you've had languishing forever. That's what this is about, boys and girls. And I'm definitely going to make more of these myself, because they're so good. And you might be looking at this and going, but this is just modifying cars in general. You've done something new. Until you sit down and you go, I'm not going to use any of my nice bits. I'm just going to use the, the swarf, the, the trash, <laughs> and not the literal garbage, but like the stuff that really doesn't get used. Like, then you know. All right, let's have a look at this finished, and what can I say? I, I cheated. I put a driver in the behind the driver's seat, and I put like a little little gunner there from Jeff Canavan from an incredibly generous gift package he he sent me last year. Hey Jeff, Jeff, I I love you, buddy. You gotta tell me where did you find these little guys? I lo they're they're absolutely to die for. The astronauts are fantastic. The little desert survival guys. I need you to tell me, man. So easy to paint. A breeze to paint. And I love them. I absolutely love them. Jeff, you got to tell me in the comments, man. Or send me a message on Patreon, buddy. And what can I say? I want this channel to return to the energy that it had when I first started. I want it to ret return to the fun that I had when I started making these videos with my very first car, as it were. And I think you guys want that too. So you know what? Look forward to more car modification videos because I love this stuff. And I love you all, Wasteland. Thank you all for watching. And as always, if you feel inspired to make one of these yourself, post it on social media, post it everywhere. And thank you for watching Wasteland and stay Wasted Wastelanders. Oh God. Oh God, please, please God, please don't don't let me accidentally delete that. I will I will kill myself. I I don't want to lose that. Alright, Editor Jim. Editor Jim in the future. Edit this in. Edit this in at the end. People need to know. It took me half an hour to record the voiceover the first time. Half an hour. And right at the end, right at the last second, I deleted the Oh my god, I want to die. I want to die. I ju I've just finished. It was a great take. It was a fantastic voiceover. Everything worked. I had like maybe three things to edit and it would have been the quickest. Oh my god. Oh, it's all gone. It's all... Because the save button and the delete button are right next to each other. God, for god forbid they could just like have them on other sides of the screen like no 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 they're right next to